Hi guys, hi guys, welcome back. We're back here today with uh, Willem. And Willem, tell us what you're going to show us today. Uh, good morning. At, uh, in the wet and nasty Durban. Alright, today, previously we spoke about a British revolver. Yeah. Today, again, a British weapon, but not a revolver. We are talking about this boy here. And what is that? This is the Sykes Fairburn fighting knife. Um, it came about during the Second World War where two gentlemen uh, that was previously connected to the Shanghai police and must have had some uh, experience with knife fighting and such. The British decided to start using what they refer to as commandos, which was like special operatives, saboteurs, maybe even uh, spying activities, that kind of thing. And um, they decided that they would have, one of the requirements, a special piece of equipment would have been the sykes Fairburn knife. All right. As you can see, let's have a look at the scabbard first. There, fairly straightforward scabbard. Stalled leather. There, you stick that to your belt. This loop is to keep the handle in place. And you've got two tabs at the back here, which could have been sewn onto the uniform, usually the trousers, I would assume, to keep it in place. All right. So, what makes this uh, knife then different? to all the other knives it available at that time why this knife why go and design a new knife it was not a really a, a new design it's a combination almost of old designs if you look at it straightforward you can notice very narrow long blade tapering to a very sharp point not excessive cross guard or quillens. Corrugated grip and um, fairly straightforward hilt. In essence, one could almost compare it to the left handed dagger that was used in the sort form of combat in the Renaissance era in Italy and especially Spain. In which they used the dagger in the left hand to forever to go when they fought with a rapier in their right. Okay. Now, this one looks very similar. It can almost be referred to as a stiletto. The blade is so narrow. It is not really designed for cutting. It's played, the edge could be sharpened, yes, but it is not designed for cutting. It's primarily a stabbing weapon. You cannot throw the weapon. It is not balanced for that. It I is see. Very much a stabbing weapon. So it's very specialized. It's not a general purpose. Very person. specialized. Not a general it's purpose knife. Very specialized. The, you can actually feel the weight in the handle. Mm -hmm. It's very much the weight is there. It will give you that, would give the guy that extra to get better penetration. Okay. It was not something you will cut your boat on with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now this weapon was manufactured. I actually wrote it down. It's written there very faint. I myself, my eyesight is very bad. I can't read it. Mm. I actually had to use a flashlight it was produced by a company, William Rogers, in Sheffield, England. And uh, the blade, 
I've actually written it down. Let me, I'm not even going to bother with this. Written down, the blade is just under 18 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Which is approximately about seven inches. Yeah, six, 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 inches. six, six to seven inches. Uh, six inches is about. 15 inches, 15 centimeters. About 15 centimeters. So this would be about, about 7 inches. Four, yeah. yeah, about yeah. 7 inches you're looking at. Just mm -hmm. short of 7 inches. That's the blade. The handle is about 11.5. And the cross guard is about 5 centimeters. The cross guard is just enough to prevent your hand from slipping onto this. Now, apparently the originals were made. There was a couple of variations of this during this time. The originals were made in by uh, Wilkinson. A Wilkinson Sword Company had a very long history in British military. It um, was more than common and your officers would have purchased these swords from Wilkinson because they were long established knife and blade makers. As a matter of fact, some of the combination was a revolver and a sword that was purchased from Wilkinson. So Wilkinson made these originally. I see and uh... Is it, uh, is the, well, the special forces in Britain, are they still using that knife? Yes, apparently they do. As a matter of fact, a large number of special forces, like the SAS, which took over the, from the so-called commandos during, after the war, uh, the Dutch Special Commandos, uh, the American OSS, all of them used uh, weapons similar and based on this design. I see. In, if you look at it, all in all, it is a nasty piece of work. Yes, yes, there's no doubt about that. It is. I won't say, I don't want to say it's evil. I think it's beautiful. Like a snake or a shark. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yo. Right. As far as I know, this was the only knife, except for specialized equipment like machetes and such, that was issued to British forces. Only the SAS or the commandos got this baby. I see. I see. But I do not even think at that time they were labor, they were available for purchase. Okay. And as you can see, you can see Sheffield is still make as being is one of your steel making centers. I see. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Willem, for another very interesting. Uh, show of our weapons and yeah we'll be back with uh, something else in the not too distant future thank you all for watching <laughs>